Hi everyone, this is Spiro with Newsbud. And this is Sabal Edmonds, and it's so good to be back. That's right. We recently just arrived back home from our trip to New York City, where we had our campaign to confront NBC. And coming up here in the next couple of days, we're going to put together a piece for everyone to see that has the footage, the recap of the whole event, the whole campaign. But today, we're going to talk about specifically a couple other topics that are related that are also very important. Sabel? Well, yes, uh, we have been getting these questions or comments from people. A lot of them are actually positive. They are saying, wow, this is so great what you did with NBC and exposing NBC going to New York City and that whole confrontation that we had in New York City. But it kind of um, it. It, it is in a way confusing. Are you now a media watchdog organization or are you a news organization and journalists just covering news? And, uh, and I think that, that that's a very important question that we should talk about and, and address because Newsbud is, and our model is different than any other uh, so-called alternative media you're seeing around. Um, as you know, many of them are the extension of the same establishment. They are funded by the same establishment, whether they are advertisers or the big sugar daddy foundations. And uh, our model, basically, from the beginning, we said we are going to be 100% people funded. And, uh, and I think in this particular case, it is very difficult to distinguish the difference because uh, there are certain intersects within journalism and, and, and what may appear as activism that needs to be explained further to, to, to our viewers. And, uh, and that's, that's what I would like to do today. I just want to take a few minutes and talk about that. Um, in this particular case, what did we do with NBC, with this Confront NBC campaign? What we did basically was we investigated the source of false information. It started on Twitter and Spiro and I, we started researching, we started going into various Twitter accounts, asking people, where did you get this? Where is the link? So that was journalism work, investigating to see where this particular false information during critical hours in this failed, attempted, failed coup started. And as journalists, we found out that, okay, it was MSNBC slash NBC News. NBC News aired it, and MSNBC producers, they were tweeting it. Later, they deleted it, but by then, tens of thousands of publications all around the world had picked it up, and they were reporting it like parrots, okay? So that's journalism work. Now, next, what did we do? We went and we actually started looking at the facts on the ground. We found out that as they were reporting this, NBC News, they were conflicting accurate information already out there available. For example, the flight uh, pattern was, was being established where Erdogan, President Erdogan was, and his press conference that was about to start within an hour, uh, within the hour of this report, false report coming from NBC. So it was very easy to see that this was reported while there were facts already out there proven that this report was inaccurate. So we went and we put together the facts. We put the timeline of where President Erdogan was, how much we knew, all of us here, but other journalists. So that's journalistic work. Then what did we do? As Newsbud, we started sending emails to NBC News and to MSNBC and seeking comment, saying, A, where did this false information come from? B, why haven't you issued official retraction? And C, you are basically quoting your senior Pentagon military source. And you have to, you owe the public an explanation of what kind of sources you're using. If you are using these government sources that are putting out propaganda and false information, what are you going to do about it? Again, that's journalistic work. We were seeking comments, response from NBC, MSNBC. We tried that. We followed that with phone calls. Nothing happened. Okay. 
At this point, we started making public demands for where is the public ret retraction, official retraction, where is your explanation? Because as journalists, we wanted to know so we can report on it, right? And as viewers, people, you, you wanted to know you are the viewers. Again, we didn't get any response. Then what we did, what we did here was we said, okay, with billions of dollars and their own studios and their, their own cameras, their own multiple spokesperson, they are not doing this. As reporters, as a news organization, we'll travel to them. We'll go to New York City and we send them notices. We made appointments. We said we are going to come and seek comments. What do journalists do? Journalists go and seek comments from whoever is the subject of their, their investigative report or their report period. And that's what we did as NewsBot. We went there, and meanwhile, we announced that we were going to go there. We announced the fact that they were not giving, providing any explanation or even giving any appointments. So that's what we did. And we called to other concerned journalists in the United States, outside the United States, that includes citizen journalists. That includes independent bloggers. We said, those people who can, please join us. Let's go there as journalists together inside the building and we seek comment from NBC, okay? And we did that. And we did get reporters, journalists from Russia, from Turkey, from Azerbaijan, from Germany. We, we, we had people from Canada who had come there. We had Turkish activists who also had their own demands saying, you owe us an explanation. In During our campaign, our campaign basically informed the Turkish embassy here. They didn't know where that news had, had, had just sprouted from. So they started coming and saying, yes, as a nation, as a sovereign nation, we want to know and we are demanding official retraction, especially now that you know it was false. So that's what we did. That's what journalists do. But what we did, Spiro, it's not just exposing NBC. NBC, in this case, symbolizes, represents the rest of them. This could have been, very well could have been uh, CNN or Fox News or CBS or PBS or NPR. We, as NewsBud, would have followed the exact same steps and we would have done the exact same thing. And, and then the question of why. It's very important why. It's extremely important why we did this. Because, yes, we know that public people have already been losing faith on mainstream media, okay? It, there has been so many lies, as, as we have mentioned during our previous shows. We have had with the Iraq WMD. We have had almost with any of our wars. We had it during Gaddafi-Libya regime change that, that and the war that we had. So many people have already come to this conclusion that what is being broadcasted from these multi-billion dollar networks is nothing but propaganda. And it's serving no one but the major corporations, the deep state, and the government. It is not to serve the public. So this was one opportunity, especially for those people who've been sitting on the fence, okay, and, and saying, well, I don't know, but still they have fact checkers, these large organizations. They have all the money. They have seasoned reporters. They have editors and the sub-editors and the assistant editors. It was to show our, the viewers, our viewers, people around the world, that these news organizations with these layers of editors and assistant editors and fact checkers and all these things, they are willingly delivering propaganda and lie. And that's exactly what we did. See, because if this was a just simple mistake, it would have been very easy. All they had to do, NBC News, was to come out and say, uh, we apologize to our viewers. This information we received from this particular Pentagon source, senior source, was false. We, we are officially retracting it. We apologize to our viewers and we have already made the correction. It's on, the, on our websites. It's in our, on air. That's it. But not doing it, NBC, what did it say to us? It said that 
That's what we do. We put out false information. We never retract it publicly. We don't owe anybody any apology because we are not there to serve you, the viewers, or the people, or the, or the people's right to know. We are serving the Pentagon, the groups who wanted us to put this false information out there, and the Central Intelligence Agency. And in other cases, it may be certain mega corporations. It has nothing to do with the facts. It has nothing to do with the truth. It has nothing to do with the people's right to know. Those are the interests we serve. And by not retracting by what happened, NBC publicly proved that one more time. And it did it loud and clearly thanks to our efforts to get ourselves there and really insist on this very, very important critical point. But this is not the only thing that, that we are exposing with this. Uh, I, I don't like Hillary Clinton, and that's putting it really mildly. I really despise this woman. But there is one book she wrote where the title of the book was something like, it takes an entire village, okay? For the system that we live under, okay, here in the United States, with the propaganda, with all the government secrecy and abuses, with everything that we see, we are not looking at only one layer or one particular entity or one particular group. It's multi-layered and it's multi-actored. It's all together that they are creating what we see today, what we live today, every single day. On one hand, we have the government, okay? If you were to go and look at all the surveys, public opinion polls, okay, bring it out, it will tell you where people are in terms of faith, trust, confidence in the United States Congress and their representatives. In fact, they are now U.S. representatives in Congress. They are ranked lower than cockroaches, okay? There is a, so we know that these entities, the governmental entities, whether they are the federal courts or they are the, you know, it's the Congress, it's the White House, whether it's Obama or Hillary Clinton, or if it's Bill Clinton or George W. Bush, we know where they are. We know whose interests they are serving. And we know that we, the people, our interest has nothing to do with them, with the government. It actually goes opposite directions because currently under our governing system, the interest of government and what they serve is in exact opposition of the interest and the welfare of the people, okay? They are two separate opposite ways. We already know that. Mainstream media has always been pointed out as the fourth state, okay? And again, we said public confidence has been dropping. We already know that a lot of people are finding out, but this, what we did here, was putting it out vividly, vividly for everyone to see. And NBC represents the rest of them, okay? When we went there in, when we went there, we, went in, we were in New York City, we, we were there. We did not come across any of these multi-million, tens of millions of dollar funded alternative news organizations either to cover this. I mean, did you see any, Spiro? Uh, no, I did not. I mean, I would say you won't see the ones who are posing as alternative, right? Let's say uh, the one that is $300 million funded Intercept by Pierre Omidyar and who is that guy, the shill, Glenn Greenwald. They did not, nobody represented them because they are serving the same interests. So when we are talking about mainstream media, this includes the, the so-called alternative who are funded by the exact same people and who are serving the exact same interests. So that goes for the fourth state we did. But it's not only that, there is one other entity ingredient layer that we were exposing by what we did on that day. And we started working on it immediately as we started investigating NBC case. The fifth state for me, to me, are these NGOs. I mean, we have thousands of NGOs in this country, right? thousands of them on, you know, in various fields. I want people to go, our viewers, to Google media watchdog non-government organizations, NGOs, okay? What does it tell you when you hear Spiro say, media watchdog? We are media watchdog. What do you think media watchdog is supposed to do? It's supposed to hold their feet to the fire, hold the media, their feet to the fire. 
Exactly. They are supposed to be these watchdogs who are looking out for the people's right to know and their interest by by fulfilling this role of being the watchdog and report, right? So if our viewers were to go and and Google media watchdog organizations, they're going to come across dozens of NGOs, well-funded NGOs. And some of them, the ones that are going to pop up first in under Google search, some of these, they have been around for 25, 30 years. They operate with tens of millions of dollars a year budget. They have close to hundreds of, you know, employees who work for them, right? They have been around, many of them, for 20, 30 years. And look, have they done anything? Because if you look at the graph of how bad the mainstream media with propaganda and false information and all these things they've been getting, and you look at the existence and expansion of media watchdog organizations, you're going to see positive correlation. Meaning, as we are getting more so-called media watchdog organizations with hundreds of millions of dollars going into them, the state of media is getting worse and worse, and we are not really seeing real exposés, real confrontation. So you think, what are they doing with these hundreds of millions of dollars with hundreds of employees? So as Newsbot, we said, this is the dual track which is related to what we are investigating. So we started doing that about a week ago, 10 days ago, we started contacting these media watchdog organizations saying, what is your comment? What are you going to do about this? Here is one perfect example. We have caught them in the act, right? You have hundreds of millions of dollars, all of you. What are you going to do with it? Nothing. We went and then we picked the largest one. So if you Google media watchdog organization people, you're going to get the first one that's going to pop there under Google search is FAIR.org, F-A-I-R. FAIR stands for, oh my God, beautiful, beautiful name. Like Patriot Act, you know, so beautifully named. It has nothing to do with what it does. Well, that's what FAIR is. FAIR and accuracy in reporting. So, we contacted FAIR.org. Our reporter, Katie, she contacted them. We sent them emails. We said, hey, we want to get your comment on what NBC did because, hey, you've been around for 30 years. What do you say to this action? B, we asked them, Can you? what are you going to do? This is a great case. We have already done all your homework for you, and you have all the resources. You have hundreds of million, millions of dollars. What are you going to do? We didn't get any response. We followed up with phone calls, okay? And we finally got a live person from FAIR.org, okay? And we asked them for comments. They refused to give us any statement, any comments, okay? We asked them what they were going to do. They basically said nothing. Then I asked our reporter to call them and say, on their websites, it says, and they have tens of millions of dollars money, uh, 38% of their money, 38 plus percent of their money comes from foundations. But if you go to fair.org website, okay, it's a media watchdog, it's NGO, and it's promising you the people, you the viewers that are going to be the watchdog and, and take care of these kinds of issues, confront them. So you don't have to do it. You the people don't have to do it, right? There is nothing on their website. They are not listing the sugar daddies who are funding them, Okay. Well, of course, we had a pretty good idea who those same sugar daddies are because we keep coming across the same sugar daddies. They keep going and popping up bastards around, right? You know, Soros, Rockefeller, Carnegie. We sent them another email. We called them. We said, uh, and we gave them deadline. Nothing. They refused fair.org. And we have the email receipts. We have our phone call records. This is one week before we went to New York City. We said, who's funding you? Why aren't you listing them on the website? Well, since FAIR.org, okay, refused to provide this information as a non-governmental agency, they are supposed to. As you people who are giving them money, if there's any of you who's gullible enough to send a check to these people, they owe you to, 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 to give that information, to put it on their website, but they are not putting it. So we did our own research, and we are going to publish this. We're going to have some follow-up articles on this. But we basically came across the same sugar daddies 
as the same mainstream media, as all the other sold out uh, so-called alternative media. You're looking at Ford Foundation, Tide Foundation, Carnegie Foundations. You're looking at the Soros's, the, 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 the a-holes of the world, the deep state, the ones that are running the mainstream media and the propaganda as well. So you're looking at media watchdogs funded by the people they are supposed to be watching. But wait, that was not it. That was not all. There is a pendejo who started this organization, okay? FAIR.org. His name is Jeff Cohen. Jeff Cohen starts FAIR.org and makes sure he's not doing media watchdogging and they are doing media lapdogging because that's what they are. They are the lapdogs, not the watchdog. And he did such a great job in the so-called watchdogging that within a few years, check this out, people, that same NBC that we went there to confront and expose, NBC and MSNBC came and said, boy, boy, you've been serving us so good. Come on over here. We give you six-figure salary, part-time work. You work for us. He left FAIR. He got on their payroll directly. And what do we call the Spiro? Revolving well, the revolving doors. door. Yes. That's exactly right. And and I tell you this, in this business, if you're doing what you're saying you're doing, meaning whether you're a real media watchdog organization or an activist, or you're a real alternative journalist, or if you're a real whistleblower, no way anybody's going to hire you with six-figure salary from the same system that you're out there fighting. In fact, you're on the blacklist. You're the last person they would hire. But this jerk, this pendejo, okay, gets to be hired by the people he was watching because he did such a great job protecting their asses. They came and said, good boy, now we're going to reward you. Three time dog, come here, lap dog. So Jeff Cohen, the lap dog, ran there and became their lap dog officially. This organization with all these millions of dollars is the same as the rest of them. And in this particular case, of course, A, they wouldn't go and join this, try to expose or confront NBC or MSNBC. Their, their puppet, their little lapdog jerky founder is working for them, okay? That's one. Two, they are not going to do the watchdogging because there are millions of dollars coming from the same sugar daddies who is running MSNBC and the NBC and the Fox News and the CNN. They share the same sugar daddies. Why this is so important? James Corbett and I have done several video episodes, discussion sessions on this, trying to tell people you have the visible enemies there, you know, mainstream media, New York Times, Washington Post, you know, the, 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 the CIA, and you have the mega corporations. But you have to be, we have to be equally as concerned about the invisible enemies who are working for our enemies, okay? And these NGOs, whether they are the NGOs set up to protect whistleblowers, you know, project on government oversight, government accountability project, just like Patriot Act, beautiful flowery names. Look at their mission statements on their website. Very, very flowery. They are the, they are the extension of the same system. They are getting funded by the same people you think they're going to watch, watch for, you know, watch out for. This is the one thing that needs to be exposed repeatedly. Same thing with the so-called alternative media channels. With millions of dollars of budget coming from the same establishment, it's no different than the mainstream media. But what does it accomplish for the enemies to use these NGO tactic? It is called the controlled opposition. Meaning, and giving the false sense of security. Because... A lot of unknowing people, okay, what they do, they say, oh, good, well, I have federal courts to watch out for my rights. I have the Congress, my representatives, to watch out for my rights. There is the media. Oh, yeah, they are not very good, but still, they are there, and they have fact checkers. So most of the times, they're going to give me facts and the truth. And then I give money to people like ACLU and FAIR.org and this one and POGO or GAP, and they do 
that activism, that watchdogging, so I don't have to do, so that you don't have to do. We can go and shop in Walmart. We can go and attend Black Fridays. We can watch our football and drink our beer and say, rest assured, I'm sending a $50 check to fair.org. They are there to watch out for my interests. Well, they are on the other team. They are not in your team. And this is journalism. Exposing and illustrating this whether it's with this NBC campaign, confront NBC campaign that we did, or doing it by going after NGOs, showing the people who fund them, showing the fact that they are there as decorative piece to give you, to give you the people the false sense of security, that's investigative journalism. That's exposing. And, and if some people want to call this activism, I wouldn't necessarily call it, but I, I think that's great. I think that's great. Do you know why? Because decades of these people, academics, some of these NGOs, writing a couple of term papers per year, investigating, has done nothing, has gotten the system much worse. Not only you have to investigate analyze, write those term papers, but you need to go out there loudly, confront, and you need to expose everything, including that confrontation to the public and send this message that nobody, but nobody within this system is watching out for your right to know, is watching out for your rights, is watching out for your welfare. It's only you who can do this. So stop sitting there idle and say, I am going to take it upon myself to go there and demand this. I am going to take it into my own hands because you don't, you, you sit and this system is going to continue. So I am proud. We've been only in this, in this business, news bud business, um, less than two months. And I am proud of what we did. I am proud of those people who donated to us and made this possible. I, I didn't have a chance to film, uh, turn or take my cell phone and film Spiro's cameras. Thanks to you, we had a very nice cam camera there too. We had our iPhone and we did live uh, broadcast through Periscope, but we also had our camera and our iPod. Thanks to you, we were able to get tickets last minute hop on the plane, and then another one, then another one, and get ourselves to New York City and do this. And guess what? We are only answerable to you, meaning those people, those people who are the reason we exist, we do this, if they tell us we rather you not do it, we are going to respond to that. We're not going to respond to George Soros. We are not going to respond to places like NBC or MSNBC or CNN. We are not going to respond to some of those NGOs who have the balls to criticize us. We don't owe them anything. We are only answerable to you, the people. And from what we have been getting, your encouraging emails, your wonderful encouraging comments, we have been on the right track. We've been doing good. So we are proud of you and we are so delighted that you are proud of us. And if it's going to come across as some sort of activism to some people, we don't give a, you know what? We don't give a heck about that, okay? Because we are going to do the right thing and we believe this is the right thing. And just sitting there and, and, and putting together fancy words and publish it on the website, and put some academic uh, mumbo-jumbo there, that's not going to get us anywhere. We are going to be watchdog journalists. That is right. That is watchdog journalism, and that's what we are engaged in. And we are going to do it with action, and we are really hoping that our action will set example for, so for many other journalists, not here, only in the United States, all around the world. Journalists and, and, and bloggers, people who say, you know what, I'm not going to wait for them to correct themselves. I am going to take it upon myself. I'm going to do it. I can do it. I can do it. And that's exactly the message we are sending. So it is multi-layered. It is multi-fronted. We need your support. We need your backing. And you're the only ones we need. We don't owe anybody. We don't have sugar daddies. 
We don't have advertisers. They can all go to hell. It has nothing to do with us. We are doing it for you and we are doing it together with you. That was the reason we sent the, we sent the invitations. We said, join us. Take your camera, join us. We are doing this together. Well, that's right, Sibel. And uh, you know, speaking of this, this watchdog group known as FAIR, uh, the founder, Jeff Cohen, back in 2001, was quoted by a German journalist saying that there have never been any strings attached to any grants. We have never, we've never been asked to tone down our criticism. If anyone tried, we would refuse the money. Ah, oh, that now, that is, we would love to have this guy, don't you think, Spiro? I think we should invite him. We should invite him to one of our roundtable discussions. See, we want to be fair and balanced. This is why we sought their comments. We kept contacting them. We emailed them. We called them. We are not just going and picking them out of the blue, out of the hat, and go and trashing them. Before we trash them, which we are doing because they deserve to be trashed, we, give them, we gave them plenty of opportunities to give us their comments, and we would have been more than happy to tell you what their comment was. They are not disclosing their funders. They are not giving any comments on NBC. But Spiro, let's, let's do that. Let's have a round table. We can invite James Corbett as well. Let's bring that pendejo or the other pendejo, whoever is the pendejo who's leading them right now, put them there around the round table and then ask them these questions. What does it mean you're not going to, you're refusing to disclose who's funding you? <laughs> if, as, as, as the quote said, if, if there, there are no strings attached, where is it on the website? Our website says it clearly. It says, Newsbud, a 100% people-funded media. It is you, the viewer. It's you, and, and we love you, okay? It's you. Plain and simple. We are disclosing it. We have a disclaimer. We owe nobody but our viewers, Okay. How about their disclaimers? Do you see any disclaimers there? How about their funders? Do you see them listed there? You will never see that. You know why? It's obvious. This is the system put together, designed specifically to have you, the people, say, I cannot do anything. It's not for me to do. We have these mechanisms, these entities. They're going to do it for me. They're going to do it for me. Well, that does not exist. What they are doing is against everything that is your interest and your rights. And that's one of the things as journalists we're going to be doing with every one of our exposés and investigative stories. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And like you said, just follow the money. And if you look at uh, these, these media organizations and then the watchdog media organizations, they're all backed by the same players. Uh, the the Rockefeller family foundations, the Ford foundations, uh, many of which I mean, it's pretty well known, common knowledge at this point, and well documented that uh, these foundations are often uh, CIA fronts. And judging from the journalism or the lack thereof from Fair and many other recipients of this foundation funding, uh, the big establishment foundations are successfully sponsoring the kind of opposition that the U.S. Ruling, ruling elite can tolerate and live with. So it's a joke at this point. It is, and, and you said it again, and I'm glad you emphasized that it is to control opposition. It is to control dissent. They would be the first one jumping out there, Spiro, if this was a matter issue that involved blacks or whites. If it was Hispanics and blacks, if it was abor pro abortions, anti abortion, they love to go and latch on to these divisive, divisive issues to make sure that they divide and conquer. So their their masters divide and conquer. But when you come to the truth, to to the real macro issues, the real diseases we are inflicted with in this nation, you will never see them anywhere around. They are hiding in their Fair.org, I wish we had time, Spiro. We would have stopped by their office while we were in New York City. We looked them up and it's like, oh, here they are in New York City. And I don't know why. I'm like, maybe we should find some of these people who are in West Coast because all our big enemies, they are over there in New York City or Washington, D.C. But we didn't have a chance to do that. But uh, let's invite, let's invite uh, Fair's rep representative. Let's put him there. And I'm ready to take him or her or whoever is the creature on and, 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 and give them the fair and balanced opportunity to, to tell the people how they are watchdogging. <laughs> Let's do that. 
Well, we will prepare that email and get it sent out. And uh, we're also going to be uh, getting right back in the saddle of things now that we're we're back from New York and get just getting warmed up again. Uh, stay tuned for more updates. We're going to be uh, providing the footage from New York. Uh, for those of you that are not aware of it, we did live stream the entire event. It was nearly two hours on Periscope. And you can go to our Twitter page, NewsBud Twitter page, and you can see the video there pinned at the top. It's been viewed more than 15,000 times at this point. But we do look to get this footage up on YouTube, on our Boiling Frogs Post YouTube channel, as well as on Boiling Frogs Post. So uh, for NewsBud, this is Spiro and Sabelle. And we'll be with you very soon with more.